I'm sorry to say we may have been building our cards UIs all wrong this whole time. Let me show you how to build something better. Now, when building a card UI, we have six things that we want to try and achieve. We want the whole thing to be clickable or touchable. We want to put lots of links inside. We want it to be semantic. We want to be able to select the text inside or highlight it. We want to navigate by keyboard and right click on stuff inside of it. We want to tab through everything to focus and we want to use the minimal amount of JavaScript possible. So let's see how to do this. Now, here's the final product. If I go ahead and preview, I'm just going to tab through and we can see I get to look at the category and hover and focus both of those. And the only thing I can't do is select the text inside, but the whole element is hoverable. So we're getting pretty close here. I'm going to tell you why these pitfalls exist in the first place. Now, the way you might have been building these is dropping a collection list in here setting the source to your blog content. Now on our list element, we'll go ahead and drop a class of list. And this goes ahead and sets up our grid. We'll make it a three column grid with a gap of one rem. And then inside of there, we want to get our item here and we'll give it the class of card. And card here sets up a flex in the downward direction with a line set to start. We've got a 0.5 rem gap with some padding over there. Position is set to relative this important for what we're gonna do later and then the color is white. So now we'll get, let's go ahead and drop in our content. Now, the way I used to do this was with a link block so that the whole thing is clickable and actually we would wanna remove the padding from the card in that case and put it on the link block itself. But let's go ahead and continue with this example. So this would go to the current retro video game and then inside of there, we'll drop our image. We'll go ahead and tie that up to the main image. We will make this the image here, just like that. And then we'll drop in something like an H3 We'll get all the H3 headings, set these to zero. And then last, we'll drop in our paragraph. Okay, so now this needs to be tied up to the post setting. And let's go ahead and just grab this card and move it from there and put it on the link block, just like so. And now this whole thing is clickable and we could set the height to 100% if we want everything to be matching up. However, let's tie this heading up to the name of the retro video game that we're going here. And now we have this whole clickable card, which is good, right? That's a good start. However, I cannot now add another link because if I want to go ahead and put in a text link, look, Webflow is blocking me from doing that. And by web standards, you're not supposed to put an A tag inside of an A tag, right? Doesn't really make a lot of sense. Another crappy thing about this setup is if I go ahead and come into preview mode here and press Command F5 to start up assistive screen reader technology and I start tabbing into the card, I don't think the audio is going to come through here, but it's actually reading everything inside of here. So what if this was like a product card that had a price inside of it and other little things like quantity and stuff that we don't need to read out to the user. So really what we just want to read out is the title there. So let's focus on that. And what we're going to do is use the pseudo before element here. So I'm going to close down the screen reader voiceover is off now. And the other thing we're going to do is we're going to just remove this card class from the link block and add it back onto our item. And we're going to pop this out of there and we're going to pop the paragraph out of that. So the link block is only wrapping our H3 now. And let's go ahead and give this a class of card underscore link. And notice in designer here, I'm not setting anything. We're gonna set this up in an embed because we wanna use that before pseudo element. So I'm gonna open up my code embed and I've got my style tags already open and I'm overriding the default link styles. This is not important for this demo. So I want to style the class of card underscore link and I want to style the before pseudo element. And what I want to do is I want to set the content to be an empty string, just means blank or nothing. I want the position, position, position to be absolute. And I want the inset to be zero. What this is doing is it's making that pseudo element take up the entire space of the card. And inset zero is basically saying top, left, bottom, and right properties to zero as well. And I will also just set the cursor in here while I am here to be the pointer cursor so that we can see. All right, so we've done that. Let's go ahead and save and close. And now if I preview, we can see I get my pointer cursor over the whole thing. However, if I went ahead and command F5 and start tabbing through this thing, we see it's just selecting the header and it's reading out only the header there. So we solved that one problem. And now also we can drag in another link to be a sibling of this link. So let's go ahead and create a text link. And this is going to get the link from the current category and we're gonna get the text from the category name as well. So, all right, we've set that up and let's drag it so it's just under the image there and then we'll give it this class of card underscore category link, which gives it some padding on the left and right. Sets so just position to relative with a Z index of two and also sets the color to be this gray color. And what that Z index of two allows us to do, let me just remove that real quick. You'll see we can't select it now because that pseudo element is covering it. 
But when we set the Z index to two, now, if I tab out of there, now we can actually go ahead and click that link if we wanted to. So and now we've built out the basic structure of what we want, but we're kind of missing some good UI around this. Like I can select the title and the category as I tab through. However, I think it makes sense to show the whole card on hover and focus states. So let's hop back into our code embed here and I'm gonna start adding some code. So let's drop this in. First, we wanna set up the hover and focus state. And we're gonna do that by setting the border to be two pixels dashed and transparent. And this is just to add a border right away so that when we add the border on hover or focus, it doesn't make the size of the card shift by two pixels. And I don't need this cursor pointer anymore, so we can go ahead and get rid of that. Now we want to indicate that the card is interactive. And the way we're going to do that is by getting the card link hover state. And we're going to grab the pseudo element of that, as well as the focus visible state, the pseudo element of that. And we'll set the border color to be orange. Now, if we save this, and we start hovering, we see we get that orange border that is showing the hover state. And we also get it on our focus state. And notice that when I am focusing, I'm getting sometimes both the card link and the card itself. So let's go ahead and fix that. So we can remove the default focus state by targeting our class of card link, the focus visible state, and setting the outline to none. So now we save and preview. And we start getting just that card being focused or highlighted. Uh, instead of the H3 that's there. And let's go ahead and fix our category link with the same process. All right, so we'll open up that embed again. And down here below these styles, I'm gonna drop two more. And those are targeting the style of card underscore category link. And I'm setting the default border, two pixels dashed and transparent, again, so that we're not getting size shifting when we start adding a border on the hover and the focus visible state which we are targeting right here, where we're going to reset and also set the border color. So we're removing the default outline, that's that blue default browser outline, and we're adding the border color to be orange now instead of transparent. So let's save that and play, and now we can go ahead and tab through these categories and the cards, and we have a nice hover and focus state applied to both of these. You could apply really anything you want. You could also do most of this using Webflow because we're not using the pseudo element on the card, category link. However, I kind of like to keep all of my styles localized to the same spot when I'm working on that sort of thing. So back on our wish list, we can click and touch the whole thing. Yes, we can put more links in it. Yes, we can do that. We can use semantic content so assistive tech can understand it. Yes, we've achieved that. Now, now something you might want to consider is it makes sense to call this an article, but on the collection item, Webflow does not let us set this to be an article element. So you could wrap this all in another div and then tag that with the article uh, semantic tag right there. I'm not gonna do that for this example. So we'll just go ahead and remove that. Now we want to be able to select text inside. Unfortunately, we can't do that. We would need to use some sort of JavaScript solution for that. And I don't think that's really necessary for our cards layout here. Hopefully if the user wanted to select text then what they could do is go to the details section and select that. So unfortunately not able to achieve number four, womp womp. Anyways, we want to navigate by keyboard and right click stuff. Yes, that is done. We want to be able to tab through everything, yes, and no JavaScript used here. So here's what I think is a great solution to a card component in Webflow. Now, one last little trick that I picked up from Tim Ricks is, you know, normally the way I style my list is by going to lower breakpoints and then setting the style down. Maybe I want two columns here, but we can make this layout adaptive by using the min max property inside of grid template column. Now, Webflow doesn't expose that to us, but I can go ahead and click on the list element here and come on down to the custom properties and we'll call this grid template columns is the one we want. And I'm going to paste in this repeat function. And so that's this whole thing in parentheses. And we're going to repeat the auto fit. And we're going to also give it a second parameter of min max. So it's a minimum of at least 18 rem and a maximum of one fractional unit. So let's go ahead and click enter. And up here we can see this gets grayed out because we've overridden it in custom properties. And now when I go ahead and preview and start collapsing my viewport, right at that moment, we shift down to two as they don't fit and then to one on mobile. So this is a really easy way to make your layout totally adaptive. Really cool trick that I think goes hand in hand with this whole cards layout. Now, if you like these CSS solutions to common problems in Webflow, go over to my website, hit up the goodies and go to Bay's favorite CSS here in the resources. Just drop your email in here and I will send you some of my favorite CSS overrides for Webflow. The next video I wanna show you are some really cool CSS only techniques for creating marquees. All right, no JavaScript needed to get those constantly scrolling logo gardens. You'll definitely wanna check that out. See you in the next video.